Hello everyone, this is Life Questions and I'm Bill Harris, your host. Life Questions is dedicated to providing you, our viewers, with answers to your questions about life. We thank you for your questions, uh, which we have promptly turned over to our panel of local ministers to review. And they are here with us now to provide their scriptural insights and perspective. I'd like you to meet them at this time. First up, we have Pastor Mark Bird, State Director of Revive Ohio, followed by Pastor Tim Benjamin of Wayne Street United Methodist Church in St. Mary's. Next, we have Pastor Patrick Kamler of Westminster Christian Church. And rounding up our panel today is Pastor Michael Wyckoff of the Joy Harvest Fellowship. Gentlemen, we welcome you uh, on our program today. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. A lot to discuss, too. There's some good viewer questions have come in. One uh, question I thought was quite pertinent we're hearing great reports now about families that are dividing over the issue of COVID-19, such thing as the uh, vaccine mandates and the like. What, as pastors, what do you advise your parishioners to do in terms of family relationships? How do you deal with this? I mean, yeah. these feelings run deep and wide. Yeah, it's difficult. I think, I think one of the things we run into, this is, this is actually a symptom of a greater problem where there's so many... Uh, issues out there and everybody wants to make their issue be the one everyone else accepts you know we, we have no tolerance whatsoever for anybody who doesn't agree with us because i'm i'm right about everything why wouldn't people want to agree with me so and, and i feel like in our families that gets worse you know now you're sitting around thanksgiving table and somebody's got this thought on the vaccine and that person's got this thought on the masks and now we have to fight this out to the to the bloody conclusion and i, I don't i don't know that that's necessary really I, I, in fact there's a lot of issues out there where we can just say eh, you know we don't agree and we might be able to have a fun argument but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter but we have made everything be so i have to be right and everybody has to embrace that i'm 100 percent correct and I think that's part of the problem is the sort of selfishness that goes into that mm -hmm. that leads us to uh, want to make you know, mountains out of molehills, if that's the way you want to look at it. And, and I, I think if you want some advice on that, yeah, there are some things that we have to take a stand on, of course. But we don't have to take a stand on everything. I mean, like a, <laughs> a, a, a this is, you know, I'm going to die on this hill kind of stand. I don't know that's necessary on every issue under the sun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. very succinct. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Pastor Bird? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of Ephesians chapter 4, and when he's, Paul's talking to us as a, our calling. And what he talks about our calling is, is with gentleness and long-suffering and lowliness, bear with one another in love, <laughs> endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Mm -hmm. And I think that is our calling. And as Christians, we should lead the charge, if you will, by example in mm -hmm. that, right? And guess what that does? That silences the mouths of, as Tim said, all the opinions that love to be thrown around now. <laughs> and so blessed are the peacemakers. Yeah. And that's where I think I'm going to go. I don't know. Peacemaking that. doesn't sound like winning people to my side, though. That's kind of the problem. <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. Pastor Michael. Well, Mark, you used the scripture, and I was looking at this question previously. And um, in Romans 14, uh, one person has faith that he may eat all things. But the one who is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats is not to regard with contempt the one who does not eat. And the one who does not eat is to not to judge the one who eats. So maybe we could take that and says, uh, you know, the one who takes the vaccine is not to regard with contempt the one who does not take the vaccine. Yeah. Uh, um, mm -hmm. The one who does not take the vaccine is not to judge the one who takes the vaccine for God has accepted him. Who are you to judge? the servant of another to his own master he stands or falls and he will stand for the Lord is able to make him stand so I thought that was uh, very good. appropriate yeah, very good mm -hmm. Pastor Cameron there's a lot I think that that underpins this entire discussion and and there's really actually even a lot more to get into but just trying to keep it for the sake of time and the, the kind of the the base amount of it is the idea of what do you value more? Do you value the relationship that you have with these people or do you value being right? right. And I think that is a calculus that people maybe not consciously consider, but they probably should because yeah, we, we wanna be right and I wanna win people to my side of things. But if we disagree, it, can we still not you know, break bread together? Mm -hmm. Can we still not mm -hmm. hang out at the same places and go to the same parties or yeah. churches or anything like that? And you know, just thinking of what it says in first corinthians where paul is writing you know hope or love bears all things believes all things endures all things like is 
are we showing love when we, you know, force people or push people out of our lives because they don't agree with us in re regards to the vaccine or something else like that. So that valuing the relationship, I think, should come first. And if you want to have a, an all out argument over that kind of thing, fine. But don't break down relationships. Don't break right. down family and friends over that, because at the end of the day, all of this stuff, all this political stuff will will fade. But relationships last longer, family lasts longer and and God is forever in all of that. So make sure that you have your priorities straight when you're thinking of this stuff. And I think a key point to this is the question was how it's breaking down families. Mm -hmm. And obviously, anytime there's breaking down of families, it is the work of Satan, honestly. So yeah, yeah. are we going to yield our members to the work of Satan and allow, as Patrick said, uh, the family to be broken down, you know, in my midst? Right? Am I yeah. going to allow that or am I going to stand up to be a person of peace, basically? Yeah. And, and you should be able to disagree in such a way that even, even if I'm, say, in a parent-child relationship and, and we're having a disagreement where I know that you're not going to get your side, uh, even in that situation, that can still preserve the relationship. We don't have to no longer be in relationship to disagree on this. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that to prioritize, as you said, uh, being right over being friends, that's, that's a... That's a that's a road with a bad end. Yeah. You, you know, another offshoot that has come as a result of the, the pandemic is mental health issues. Mm -hmm. um, and they're springing up in terms of numbers and statistics all across the country. We had, of course, mental health problems before COVID, and, uh, but now it's, it's exacerbated. What, um, what, what, what advice, I should say, what advice would you have for families and for individuals particularly in the area of preventive mental health, preventive issues, as well as those that are dealing with current mental health issues, how to deal with these issues. I think the most fertile uh, ground for developing these kind of issues we're talking about is isolation. And I think that's, that's what's causing the problem. Yeah. Uh, people who, who are spending long amounts of time without <laughs> being in relationship, maybe because of COVID, maybe because we had a disagreement over something in the past, whatever yeah. the issue is, uh, isolation is where those things tend, tend to grow and develop and, and you don't have anybody saying, you know, pushing back against something you may be thinking or a, a bad uh, uh, way of, you know, mind pattern you're going through. And if you don't have anybody providing that kind of accountability and those kind of relationships, uh, any, any problem you have is going to spiral out of control. It'd be like a broken arm that you don't set, you know, that it's not going to heal. Yeah. If you, yeah. But you, you you can't set it yourself. You have to go to a doctor and, and so on and so forth. You have to get some help where, where when you're isolated, you're not getting that emotionally. And that's where a lot of this breakdown is coming from, I think. Yeah, you know, I'm uh, the board chairman of an organization called the Area Office on Aging of Northwest mm -hmm. Ohio. Mm -hmm. We cover 10 counties with county commissioners as, as board members and, and others. Um, we, we got a statistic fairly recently that showed that the loneliness and isolation as a result of the pandemic uh, and the impact of the uh, isolation on the body, on the mind, is the equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Wow. Uh, that's, that's really something to deal with. Um, how, how can we begin to address this kind of the issue with, with the isolation and the social distancing we, we must keep in the light, but nonetheless try to have some balance, as you were talking about, mm -hmm. the, the isolation has prevented uh, the, the cohesiveness of mm -hmm. relationships mm -hmm. that we've learned to enjoy over the years, of yeah. course. What do we do? Well, Press you Michael? know, p part of it, <clears throat> well, actually, this dovetails on the same thing mm -hmm. that Tim was talking about, and, um, you know, we get depressed and we get into mental health issues a lot of times, and I don't want to simplify, I don't want to overgeneralize, because sure. mental sure. health really stems from a lot of different things, sure. you know, grief and so forth. But, you know, I guess maybe for the Christians, for the believers, um, my heart's very heavy about believers staying home from church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, church attendance is down. Of course, we pastors say, well, oh, people aren't coming, you know. But really, um, you know, when we, st and, and I, myself, before I was a pastor, you know, eh, it's kind of nice to stay home. I mean, I, I get it. it. It's very easy to get into that habit, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, right. not assembling ourselves together. Some are in the habit of doing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you go to church and if you have a good you know, church where the word is taught, the word of God helps us with our thinking. And a lot of mental health comes out of 
lies and wrong mm -hmm. thinking. Mm -hmm. They've you know, been held accountable for exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and yep. and when you hear the word, you know, faith comes from hearing, hearing by the word of God, yes. and and you know, Paul says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, God doesn't just say, you know. Certainly God saves us, God does a lot of things supernaturally, but it's really up to us when it comes to the way we think and the way we respond and, the, and our perspective on life. And we need the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And if you're stuck at home, then you know, open that Bible, you know, like the Psalms. You know, I, heard, I just heard this uh, last night, I'm, on, I'm a board member for another church, but I heard uh, you know, this one pastor was talking about depression and he said that 40% of the Psalms is um, what, what word are you? Negative. In other words, you know, I'm hurt. I'm depressed. Lamenting. I'm lament. Yes, lament. Okay. Right. But you know, woven in those psalms are words of encouragement and so forth. So I would suggest, if you know, if, there, if you're out there, you know, you have depression, you know, get in the Bible and start with the psalms. Find your voice in the psalms, and 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 just read that Bible, and and it'll, you know, my so my words are medicine to their flesh. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, I'm reminded that, uh, you know, when someone is sentenced uh, to be incarcerated and it's a form of punishment, but when you're incarcerated, the worst form of punishment in the institution is what? Solitary. Isolation. Solitary. Yep. Mm -hmm. Isolation. Mm -hmm. And it's the same exact thing. And so what does it do? It, it messes with people's minds. Mm. Uh, and if they can't uh, get their attention in any other way when they put them in confinement and isolate them Then that's when they can be what controlled mm. Mm. But does that does that resolve the problem the initial problem that got them there in the first place? Do you think when you isolate them like that? I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I yeah, so I, I think we're built and I think everybody here would agree We're all as human beings. We're built for community. community. Yeah. This yeah. is yeah. why this is why Amen. we yeah. purport the church, right? Because it's community. It's fellowship. Yeah. Uh, there's something to that, right? It, it was in the early church, the very beginning, that thing. And I think there's something to it spiritually. And Bill, like you said, uh, you can just like, OK, well, God supernaturally just zap us. But there's something that happens right in acceptance and love and fellowship that God does God brings us when we come together in unity mm -hmm. in fact Psalm 133 God mm -hmm. said I will command my blessing there mm -hmm. upon that unity yeah. hmm. maybe you need to yeah. talk to some cor corrections officials about <laughs> <Yes>. uh, isolation <laughs> yeah well, listen, we've got to take a quick break. We're going to come back. I want to get on this a little bit more, and then we'll move on to some other subjects as well. But stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. We're back. How do we deal with these mental health issues in a preventative measure? And what do we need to be doing as well for those who are identified as having these struggles to help pull them out of it? What biblically, what scripturally should we be doing? I think, uh, Bill, what comes to my mind comes out of Romans chapter 12 and uh, putting ourselves a as a Christian in a response to someone that's struggling with mental health issues. Uh, Paul instructs the Romans here in verse 15, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Hmm. that associate, right? Mm -hmm. It's the mm -hmm. opposite yeah. of isolation. Yeah. Again, associate yourself, but don't be <clears throat> wise in your own opinion uh, and, and throw out your opinions about it, but repay no one evil for evil. Just have regard for good things in the sight of all men. And I think just having sympathy, empathy for our fellow brother, sister that is struggling with these problems instead of, instead of trying to just come out with an answer to write it down, here's exactly. your prescription, exactly. mm -hmm. right? But just literally get down and weep with those who weep, understand what they're going through. And sometimes all they need is just that affection, yeah. that love, yeah. honestly, I, to snap them out of things. And I think too, to be transparent, if it's something that you have dealt with and you've gone through, if you are willing to mm. be open about mm. it and 
and uh, bring up your own testimony of having overcome that. That's good. Yeah, and, and, That and, can and, help somebody and, else. And those things build relationships. I mean, that's what we've been talking about the whole episode here is the importance of being in relationship. And I think a lot of the people who are where Mark is talking about is that's what they're screaming for. That's, that's why they're having the problems they're having is they don't have healthy relationships. And I, I, not, not only with other people, but with God even. And I, I think to be able to understand uh, uh, the nurturing aspect of a relationship with God and a nurturing relationship with the people around you, that, that, that becomes a, a, a kind of a standard that you can look at and it's accountability so that when you start going down to one of those bad places, either mentally or physically or both, uh, somebody's there to say, yeah, I don't, I don't know if we want to do this and, and try to pull us back from the edge, so to speak. And I don't think enough people have relationships they trust that much to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think COVID and the shutdowns and ma masks, we can't see each other's faces. Mm -hmm. I think it's made it all worse. Yeah. yeah. And then, Pastor Wyckoff, you, you talked a bit about controlling your thoughts, the mm -hmm. thoughts coming into your, to your life. Uh, obviously, there are thoughts that come to you that you had mm -hmm. no control. They just came. But yeah. it's what you do with the thought after right. it's gone exactly. into you, I yeah. guess, right? I, think, I don't know. It was John Wesley, one of the Methodist pastors mm -hmm. here. Uh, he said, I think he said, if you can't help from having the birds fly over your head, but you can stop them from making a nest in your hair. <laughs> in other words, thoughts will come. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I believe they're, they can be demonic. It doesn't mean you're demonic, but it's just, it's an external yes. thing. Yes. You're no good. Yes. You're, you're worthless. Mm -hmm. All these thoughts come in and we, we keep meditating on them. Mm -hmm. And when you meditate on them, you know, they come to pass. You're, you know, it's like a seed in your heart. It, it, mm -hmm. it sprouts mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. bears fruit, suicide and, and violence or whatever. So um, I, like, I like what uh, Paul says here. Uh, this is Philippians 4, eight. finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, think these about things. these things. You can change your mind, yeah. you know, and, and, and continue to dwell on those things. And I think the next verse says, you know, follow my example, paraphrasing, mm -hmm. and the God of peace will be with you. Yeah. You know, I heard somebody say that um, you, you can entertain thoughts so long, they reach a point where they begin to entertain you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, then you good. don't want to let them go, yeah. you see? Well, right. and, then, and then they can possess you. Control you. Yeah, yeah. control exactly. you, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the control you have over thoughts is extremely limited. Just think, for example, okay, don't think of a pink elephant. Uh, <laughs> guess what? Everyone's going to start thinking of a pink elephant. Right. But like, like you said, you can control what you do with that thought right. once you have exactly. it. And, exactly. and I think another element of this, too, is... There, there might be some people out there watching, some Christians who think, man, I, I, feel, I feel worry, I feel anxiety. I, I shouldn't be feeling these. I, I, I shouldn't have these because I'm a follower of Jesus. That it, First of all, don't lay an extra layer of shame on top of everything right. else that's going on exactly. because you're feeling these things. As yeah. we They're said right. in the Psalms, mm -hmm. you know, David struggled. The other writers of the Psalms struggled. Right. Why is this happening to me? Why are these things going on? And then they would respond with another psalm later going, God, I know that you're good. I know that you're faithful. I know that you will pull me through this. I don't yeah. know what that looks like, but I know that you will, that you will come through this. Yeah. So don't add a layer of shame onto if you're feeling this, but also understand that uh, you can appeal to God with these thoughts. You can, as you know, as, as John tells us, test the spirits. Mm -hmm. There are times where you have a thought planted into your mind that guess what? Maybe it's you, maybe it's bad pizza, Maybe it's demonic attack, but mm -hmm. the closer we are, someone mentioned intimacy with Christ, mm -hmm. the more intimacy you have, the more you're able to determine, okay, I know, I know what my shepherd sounds like, mm -hmm. and I know what he doesn't sound like, and I'm able to parse away those thoughts and, and take more control over that in the name of Christ, in the name of Jesus, so that when I do have those anxious thoughts, you're going to have them, you're going to have worry that comes up, but you're not controlled by it. You're not, you know, knuckled under and, and forced to yeah. concede whatever else is, is coming up. You can fight back, I guess, in essence. Right. Yeah. And, and certainly there are some things that, that can be overwhelming, of course. Mm -hmm. But I, I do believe that, that we have more power over our thoughts than they have over us. Yes. If, if, yes. If, if we don't, if we allow them to fester, if we allow them to sit, if we spend time with, if we become intimate with those thoughts and, and let them become, seep into who we are, then we are entertained by them. And, and I feel like Today we think, well, I feel this, or I think this, or I am this, or whatever, and we just go ahead and let that go. We just let, let, it, let that take over. I think that's wrong. Uh, I think that we have authority to say, that's not the truth. Yep. Now, I know that there may be some, some, some obstacles to that, 
but to just say, well, I feel it, therefore I am, that's, that's, not, that's not true. Yeah. And uh, just because I may have negative self-esteem and stuff, I don't have to be owned by that. I don't have to be possessed by that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I can claim freedom from that because that's exactly what Jesus said if I'm willing to claim it. If I'm not willing to claim it, then the promise sits on the table and does nothing. And I, and, I, and I feel like it's scary that we allow ourselves to be so ruled by whatever these things are that now we become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that's, that's the worst case scenario. Yeah. Bill, more. yeah, I'm reminded of the Lord's Prayer. He says, pray that you enter not into temptation. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. Not that the temptation won't come, right? But that you don't enter into it. Yes. That's actually the prayer that yeah. he taught us to pray. Yeah. And so that sticks out to me, like in this instance, not that the thoughts won't come, mm -hmm. but that sure. we don't enter into them. We yeah. don't give a place for them to yeah. seat. And so. another scripture, casting down imaginations. Yes. Oh, and yeah. everything that exalts itself mm -hmm. against the knowledge of Christ. It's 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter, 10, chapter 4, 10, yes. I think it's 10, 10, 10, yeah, 10 verses 4. 3 yeah. to 5. Yeah. 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 Never what? underestimate the spiritual power of a nap and a snack. Yeah. Hey, I like that too. Yeah. Never underestimate spirituals because you can't you can't completely and totally separate the physical from the spiritual. When Elijah did battle with the priests of Baal, he went into a severe depression because he knew people were coming after him. Mm. So what does he do? He retreats. He retreats into the mountain, and God causes him to sleep, mm. gives him food, and says, "You're still not ready. Take another nap." Mm. So sometimes you you need rest. You need nourishment. You need sunlight. Sometimes you're just a complicated house plant. There's things that you can do physically to help yourself out. And maybe once you've met, the, have those physical needs met, that helps with the spiritual, that helps with the mental. Um, all of those things can, in, in, can improve your mood also. So don't yep. neglect that either. Yeah, well, you short, ask yourself, is, is the direction I'm going, the choices I'm making, fostering that? Right, yeah. yeah. What or or am I neglecting it? What was that short, snappy way you put it earlier, though? Never yeah. underestimate the spiritual power of a nap and a snack. A nap and a snack. Mm -hmm. I'd never heard it that way. Two of my favorite things, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, I, I like that one. You know, worry comes under this. Would it, would it not under this heading that you're discussing? Some of the same oh, guidelines sure. you're giving now about uh, this is uh, also attributable to worry. And it, it's hard sometimes to get people to know or to understand, as the Bible says, that you, what are you going to add to your life if you continue to worry? You can't mm -hmm. change a thing. Uh, would you speak to that and to encourage somebody? Well, and I think a lot of people, uh, you know, they, they look at, I mean, we've all read the book of This Present Darkness by Frank Peretti. We've all, I mean, that's kind of a classic. And, and we all kind of think that of, of evil as this kind of floating energy around and the, and the demon up on the tree or whatever. Mm -hmm. but, but honestly, some of these things function in that way and worry is one of them. It can stick to you like, like glue. And, and if we don't make any attempt to shed it, it's just going to be there. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, think, we, we think that just these things will just kind of slide away or miss us if we don't resist them. You know, I'll go ahead and entertain the worry and I expect it to go away, even though I keep inviting it back. And, and, and I feel like that, that's the problem a lot of us run into is we make no effort or very little effort or minimal effort to try to shake off some of these negative things because they're out there. There's no question about it. But if we don't make any attempt to shake those things off, they're going to cling to us. And they'll be stuck there until we at least make an effort to shake them off. The, the opportunity to shake those things off is there but we don't ever exercise that power or that authority. And many times if you confront, like you, you're worrying about something, whatever it is, and you never confront what it is, then you never have a chance to, to, to dig in and go, okay, yeah. in this particular situation, what am I really worried about? What is the thing that I am so concerned about? Mm -hmm. And there are many times where if you, if you drill down to it, you find you get to a place where it's like, I have no idea why I'm worrying about this. Yeah. Either it, it's something that's just crazy or something that ultimately I really have no control, no control over, so worrying exactly. about it is not going to help out either. But we just assume that, well, that I'm worrying about And I say this as someone who is something of a chronic worrier, or was a chronic <laughs> worrier, put it that way, that worrying has never, has never helped. Worrying has never added a year to my life or an inch to my height or however mm -hmm. you want to read yeah. that. Yeah. So when you confront it and start asking questions like, why am I worrying about this? Why do I have anxiety about this? Many times that, that dissipates and you see it for what it is, which is empty and something that is taking you away from what God wants you to sure. be dwelling on. And let me take that next step is worry always has to be a motivation. If I'm worried about something, then I need to respond and do something. If I'm not, sure. if I'm just sitting there and worrying about yep. it, that's doing nothing. Right. And, and that's, that's the dangerous part of worry. That's the destructive part of worry is when it's just something I'm, I'm doing passively. If worrying is active, like I, I, you know, I, 
well, thank you for the bad weather that's coming this week. You know, I'm making arrangements to make sure I've got a gallon of milk in the refrigerator. Right, 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 and, no. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, that's that's exactly that's right. <laughs> so, so if my worry causes me to do so, that's great. But if I'm just going to worry about having a foot of snow in my driveway, there's I, nothing I can do about that. Yeah. I think, Bill, uh, one, in counseling people over the years that struggle with worry, yeah. uh, there's a key phrase that the enemy uses all the time. What if? Mm -hmm. oh, and it's yes. a trap. Mm -hmm. And it's yes. a never end because no matter what the answer is, no matter how you answer, well, what if this? Yeah, it's and then, and then the next response else, is, sure. well, what if that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, then what if, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that becomes a trap. That becomes a, a snare, if you will. Yes. And scripture talks about a snare, a fear of man is a snare. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. really what, where uh, that comes from, I think. And uh, I think it's just to say, stop. Let's just pause. Wait. Yeah. No. I'm going to what if not? Yeah. I'm going to research that. What if? There's yeah, a yeah. lot to be had in that. What yeah. if? It's, well, it's a so open ended. It never ends. Yes. Right? What yes. if can go on forever. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite scripture, one of my favorite scriptures is 1 Peter 5 7, casting all your he care cares. on him yeah. because he cares, he cares for, you. for you. And casting is, yeah. you know, taking up and, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, actually. You dump it on him. <laughs> you know, trick is, you got to, don't take it back, you know. Right. And if you do, just. Yeah. Yeah. Cast it on him, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you, it works. Mm -hmm. It does. I, 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 pardon me for being unfair, but I want to ask you, how do you resolve conflict? We have such a little time left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. About a minute and a half we've got here, I'm told. How do we resolve godly, in a godly way, resolve conflict? Uh, well, I think, I think the, the, if you're talking about counsel, if we're counseling somebody to try to do that, it's about, uh, again, sort of going back to what we talked about before is, be, being right can never be more important than the relationship. And, and I, I, I would say that to people, you know, because a lot of people want to be right at all costs. And, I, and, and yes, there may be somebody who doesn't get their way and maybe somebody who does, and we have to love each other through that, but that doesn't always work. Good. Lay the cards out on the table. Let's, yeah. let's know what we're talking about when we're talking, because a lot of times so many... Saying the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 so many yeah. interpersonal conflicts come from, well, we're, we're arguing about this, but... But actually, we're arguing about something else. Yeah. So the other person thinks that we're really talking about this. And, and there can be a lot of, even in the midst of communication, there could be a lot of miscommunication with mm. trying to make sure that we're all on the same page. So get that stuff out. If something is bothering you, if someone has offended you, biblically, you go to them. Say, hey, this has bothered me. And then get everything out there and then start to address it. All right. I'm going to have to cut it off at that. We've run out of time. Yeah. But let me just say for our audience, even though we're ending our program for today, this same fine panel will be back with us next week. So tune in again <laughs> for next week's program. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. For these fine gentlemen, we thank you for being with us today. We look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.